So what does equitable grading look like? If you've been following along the Grading for Equity playlist from the Feldman text, we've talked about in chapter one how grades can be a tool for motivation. Uh, we've talked about in chapter two how uh, we want to do better for the next generation. In chapter three, we talked about inviting curiosity and questions through our grading. In chapter four, we talked about reducing bias. And in chapter five, we talked about whether we're judging students for the mistakes that they make or encouraging them to fail forward. So let's say, you know, we're thinking about equity grading and we're like, you know, what does grading for equity look like? Uh, Feldman states in page 65, hey, if grades are here to stay, we want them and our grading practices to, to promote the best and most aspirational thinking of what students are capable of as learners, regardless of whatever their situation might be. And he talks about three pillars. Uh, and the first pillar is that grading is accurate, mathematically correct and sound. Now, I know that sounds like a total obvious thing, right? But I think we're going to find out that oftentimes grading is not mathematically accurate, as we kind of remember from Tangela's story in a previous episode. Uh, the second pillar focuses in on being um, bias resistant and making sure that equitable grading is bias resistant. And in previous episodes, we've talked about the extreme subjectivity of grades, not only amongst one teacher, but across uh, many teachers. Uh, and the third pillar is um, equitable grading is motivational. Uh, does the way I grade motivate um, my students? Now, this book actually got me thinking about one of my classes. And so I told them, look, everybody, I want you to win. There's no bell curve in this class. If each of you are hitting the mark, you can all get an A or B in this class. And I would love to see that happen. And I'm here to support you. And we can work with our peers to get there together. You know there's a rubric. You know there's expectation that's there. We know how to progress monitor and support one another. I'm going to give you the feedback. And pretty much you're deciding in this class what grade you want. And I want you, though, to be awesome. And let's win together. So I said that to my class. And I, I hope that was motivational to them. And I'm seeing some really great student work come out of that class, more than if I was just penalizing them for every single thing that they got wrong. So those are the three pillars, um, accuracy, bi being bias resistant, being motivational. And the last uh, supplementary uh, pillar uh, is coherence. And you're gonna see a lot of, uh, I think educators talk about intellectual freedom. I wanna be in control of how I grade and I can see some uh, definitely room for the uh, some flexibility in how we teach. But Feldman talks about some shared understandings. Can we have some shared understanding, some common understanding, some common set of practices? And um, I think that's that's reasonable. So let's say we did this. We made our grading more accurate. We were uh, we made grading uh, grading more bias resistant. We were more motivational with our grading, and then we're also you saw that coherency across the board. Would that solve all our educational woes? No, that would not solve all our educational uh, woes. But, you know, it's actually one thing, though, that teachers have a lot of control over. We have a lot of control over the way that we grade. So I think we get uh, a lot of bang for our buck if we focused in on this area. Made grading more accurate, uh, tried to make it bias resistant, thought about how to make grades more motivational, and then some coherency across the team. Did this episode help you to think about equitable grading? Uh, if so, feel free to like. Uh, we want to continue to talk about equitable grading practices. So if this was helpful, be sure to subscribe. I have a video coming out on a relevant topic uh, every week related to helping our students find out what they're good at so that they can do good with it. This is Dr. Jeff from Ed Family signing out.